So we're back today with our usual style of video, three rides in, and we're gonna have a look around the shop, sir, run. We're also gonna set it up for some top speed runs. Currently, it's set up for wheelies, so we've got a big sprocket on the back. We're not using as many amps as the controller can push or the battery can let out. So today, we shrink the sprocket, up the amps, and then get it ready for a speed run to find out how fast this thing can go. So that's today's mission. We're not gonna do any riding today. We're just gonna do the maintenance bits on the bike, go around it, check things, check how things are going down and you know. Definitely a little bit dirty, so after we've done all this, I think jet wash is in order. I think the lid extender is on its way as well, out of 3D printers. So, looking at this, the first thing I noticed is this brake caliper, brake disc, sorry, brake rotor. Check this. So that's gonna have to go. This I actually ordered from eBay. This was a more cost-effective item, I can't lie was a little bit cheap this, and I seem to have paid the price. Three rides in, we've got some considerable movement in there that I think is gonna have to go. Forty-two tooth sprocket, and the yellow chain from when we did the QS165 and started the 96 volt battery. So, yeah. Check these headset bearings as well. Yeah, they're all right. So I think first things first, if we go over here. So we've got a new brake disc, it's a stock one. So we're gonna go back to the stock rotor on the back. So we've got one of those. So what we need to do now is drop the back wheel, change this rotor and change the sprocket and take the chain off. So let's do that now. We've got 17 mil ratchet, six mil Allen key, 10 mil spanner. First thing we're gonna do is get these tensioners and just One wheel. I wonder what's in him. Sand or rice, probably. Maybe it's little shells? In fact, we'll start with, we'll start with the sprocket first. Do the sprocket, then we'll do the brake disc. Sprock it off first. I thought I'd save you some pretty boring, basically just turning of bolts. And we've changed, look, we've got stunning stock rotor there. Don't worry about that, that's a bit of, ta not tape, it's 
bit of the label. Whoever stuck that label on there and done me dirty. But don't worry, we'll get a bit of brake cleaner on that and get rid of that in a sec. But anyway, so disc is on now. Next job to do, put this back in, take the chain off and put the chain that I've already got pre-made for this size sprocket onto the bike. Let's do that. Always good to have a bit of lube on the shaft before you put it in. It's common sense, come on, common sense, guys. So, stick that in there. Oh, just a quick side note. Um, all of the work on the bike, bearing a few things. Shout out Big Rai for doing my swing arm bearings and shout out to the powder coaters for doing the frame and swing arm, but everything else, I've tried to wrench myself so I get that. You know that real warm sense of achievement? That's what I was looking for. That warm, fuzzy sense of doing something okay until it's not okay. That warm, fuzzy sensation of buying cheap eBay disc brakes for them to fail on you three rides later. Yeah, something like that. Huge difference in sprockets there. This one's the wheelie sprocket and that's gonna go with the wheelie chain when we pull it off. This one's the high speed zero to 100 sprocket. Let's try and find this split link. going to put this chain through this sprocket because then I know that this chain goes with this sprocket. I'll give it a little clean before it goes back onto anything but we're just going to do this and put the split link back together so that doesn't fade into obscurity. So not only have I got a medieval weapon of war I'm also guaranteed that when I want to go back to this sprocket size, I've got the chain that went with it because it's only seen three rides despite it looking kind of filthy. So we'll put that aside now. Move over to this. Give it a quick. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. So, moving swiftly on to this brake here. Magura, Magura, Magura. Look, touches the lever and then pump it again, doesn't. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't. So, some bleeding is probably in order. Let's get that done. So, the more observant of you will notice that I cracked one of these rings. That happened removing these neon yellow rings out of an MT7 caliper because they come naturally with the MT7 caliper. And obviously, in my excitement to wrench it out with a flatted screwdriver, I snapped some of the paint off it. So, that's the story behind that. Let's just go ahead and get this bled now. Some Amazon finest brake fluid there. Mineral oil. 
because he's drink mineral oil, if you didn't know that already. Let's just zoom out so you can see some of this chemistry happening. try to make an angle so you can see it going in from the bottom and then coming up to here. This is where you want to see the bubbles coming out if we've been successful. So look, we're going to start pushing some fluid through now. Well, I see some bubbles straight away. Bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. Hopefully that's my poor brake performance disappearing now. Give it the Magura flick. If you don't know about this, this is a little trick. Right, so now we spill some brake fluid on the floor off camera. You didn't see that. This goes in there. Pads have already been done, so just not long done new pads, and the pads look okay, so don't need any more pads. I think tomorrow, because we're going to call it a day now, but I think tomorrow we'll do a jet wash, we'll grease some of the, all the rest of the bearings, and I think we're ready to ride. Oh, and we're going to tune it as well. We're going to step it up to max, max, max power. So, yeah, that's all coming soon. Yeah. 